I'm Rob Clementi, the Chief Executive of 10, the Education Network, and I'm with Michelle Griffiths from TAG Financial. And why Michelle here is incredibly important. The government has just announced an extraordinary new tax on super balances of $3 million or more, which will cut in on the 1st of July, 2025. Michelle, what is the government proposing here? Bottom line, Rob, is that they're going to start to tax people who've got balances over $3 million in superannuation. And that's regardless of whether it's in pension mode or accumulation mode, whether it's in defined benefit or, or, or you know, regular accumulation funds. Anybody who's got over $3 million, they are going to effectively deem a rate of return by using the transfer, uh, the total superannuation balance at the beginning of the year and the end of the year. They're going to adjust it for what you might have taken out and what what you've put in in order to work out what your earnings have been in that environment over that 12-month period. And then they're going to basically tax any amount that's over that $3 million. So the proportional balance that's over $3 million, they're going to basically tax the deemed earning formula at a 15% tax rate. So that's going to take the tax rate from 15% up to 30% for some clients on those balances that are over $3 million. Uh, part of that, I think the implication, is, as far as I understand it, is they're going to tax uniquely unrealised capital gains. Is Correct. that right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is because there's no capacity. For it. So it's not actually tying it back to what is the taxable income of the fund or of your balance. It is literally a what's the start balance, what's the end balance. And by default, because super funds are required to you know, uh, do those measurements of your account balance based on market value, you're essentially going to be taxed on the unrealised gains in that 12-month period. And just tell me a little bit more about the measurement uh, proposal. Um, this is at the 30th of June, and yes. it's going to be, where are they going to get the information from? From the ATO? Basically, it's going to be all already available because the total superannuation balance is actually being fed through to the ATO. It's available on the ATO portals. People individually have got ready access to that measure. They've been using that for some time. So they're actually just using mechanisms that are already in place. So from that perspective, it's actually quite clever. But the issue then becomes is that the proportion that is over 30 the three million dollars, and this is on a per individual basis, not a per fund basis, which is important to note. They're going to basically measure the proportion of your total balance that's over the three million dollars as at the thirtieth of June. So it's at the end of the year. There's no proportional, you know. Oh well, at the beginning it was only two percent that was over, but at the end it's ten percent over because you've had a really good year. No, no, it's only going to be an end of year measurement as far as what the proportion is that's over $3 million. And will there be a refund, in fact, if there's a loss in the following year? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> that would be way too fair, I think, Rob. So, no, <laughs> what they are saying is that if there is a backward movement, which, you know, we've just been through some times where there's definitely been some negative returns in a lot of funds, um, you are literally just able to carry that forward to the next year uh, and to use that to soak up the profit or the excess then in the following year but no they don't give you a refund when it's when it's going the other way and also in relation to capital gains the basic 15 percent tax is cut to 10 percent for capital gains for super fund Correct. will that apply for this tax no it's not there's no distinguishing between it, it is just a flat 15 percent tax rate and it's and it's actually levied to the individual and this is another little important point it's levied to the individual and they can actually either pay it themselves personally or they can actually ask for it to be paid or basically release some money out of superannuation to pay it if they wish. So, but it's interesting that's actually assessed to the individual. Now, I also understand that rather extraordinarily, the $3 million cap will not be indexed. What are the implications of that failure to index the $3 million cap in your view? Well, you've got to wonder whether that's actually quite deliberate because it's not going to be that long, like probably, what, 10 to 15 years with indexation of the one point, what is now going to be the $1.9 million 
uh, limit for all these other purposes, that's going to get up to $3 million in a, it, absolutely in our lifetime. So it's actually, I do wonder if it's actually quite deliberate that they're really trying to cap those future balances at these lower amounts going forward because I think that that's actually, uh, I just think it's awful that they're actually saying not to index that $3 million level. So we'll see, we'll watch this space on this one, I think. Yes, and I, and I think that um, the fact that they're not will mean that a lot of the millennial generation who wouldn't be worried about super at the moment will suddenly realise that when they retire, they're going to be paying this tax or even before. Yeah. And once again, is is the intent to make superannuation less appealing because this sort of measure with that $3 million not being indexed, that's actually going to start putting a real dampener on people's enthusiasm for superannuation in the long term as a long-term investment vehicle. Um, finally, Michelle, in your view, should you take money out of super? Should you stop contributing extra amounts? What do you think people should be thinking about in relation to this? Well, look, unfortunately, I think it's one of those things where it depends on what your personal situation is. I think if you've got a high, you know, if you've got high income in other entities outside of superannuation, it possibly might make sense just to leave it in superannuation. However, what you're then going to have is actually three potential groups of tax. You're going to have the normal tax because you're only able to have the certain amount in pension mode. So 15% on the normal tax. You're then going to have this extra 15% on the income, including on the unrealized capital gains. Then you've got to remember you're also going to have another potentially 17% tax hit at the end to your beneficiaries when it goes down to your kids when, you're, when you've gone. When you start adding up all of those tax rates, it's starting to become a little less appealing. So there may be some arguments to actually pull it out of superannuation. Maybe we use family trusts, company, where we're actually starting to use a lot of investment companies as an option. And at least you know what tax you're paying. And at least you're not having then that extra death tax effectively being levied. So I think that there's going to be a lot of individual assessment and options being explored. Michelle Griffiths, thank you very much for joining us today. There's obviously a lot more to talk about in relation to this subject and there'll be more water flowing under the bridge. It'll be interesting to see what Parliament does with it. Thanks so, so much. Interesting times ahead, Rob. Thanks, Michelle.